Good. 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 What would you do if they, they didn't look so good? What, what would your action be if you're in Call garage? you. Call me would be good. That, that, was, good. that was very good. But I'm not going to say, okay, what's the lot of quality? And you're going to say, I don't know. Ah. So. Can we borrow your device for a minute? <laughs> that was fun yesterday. You guys really impressed me the way you handled that little activity session. I don't have nearly so much fun to today as far as our test. stuff, but. But the best I could come up with, I did come up with a few things, so we'll get to play part way through. So today is, I spent six weeks covering this topic in a class I teach at UF, so trying to do it in 45 minutes is a little unfair to everybody, especially y'all. But let's just kind of review what we've already talked about. We talked about um, fish health. Oh, you got a fish. Excellent. Well, it's, it's, we're going to use it. Half a fish. We're going to use this fish. First, does he look healthy? Yes. Pat, what, do you, what do you see? He looks dead. Good, good coloration. Good color. Nice fins. Is he fat? Somewhat. On this side. <laughs> Not so much on that side. Thank you, Leslie. All right. So we have talked about introduction to fish health. We've talked about what do we call it when we get new animals in and we separate them? Uh, quarantine. Quarantine, yes. We talked about quarantine. We talked about each farm needing to have what to keep their health stuff in order. Biosecurity. Biosecurity, okay. We went through water quality yesterday and you guys were really good on your nitrogen cycle, what's the nitrogen cycle again? Ammonia. I can't, I always mix these two up. It's, I know it's nitrate and nitrite. It's ammonia, nitrate, nitrite, or nitrite, nitrate. Nitrite, yeah. nitrate. So here's what Miss Rachel said yesterday, how she remembers it. I, before, I ice not before. Hey, what did she say that for? I don't know, but that's what she said. She said ice before A. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> but I just said to Miss Rachel, it does. Um, so nitrite. Um, yeah, nitrite is second, yeah. nitrate is third. So whatever little acronym you can remember. And which one of those causes brown blood disease? Uh, nitrite. Good, nitrite. good, good, good. Okay, and then we talked a little bit about oxygen and carbon dioxide and pH, and you guys looked at that in the oh, tanks. Oh. And when carbon dioxide is high, where's pH? Uh, low. Good, yeah. and when carbon dioxide is low, pH is high. All right, and then the last thing we talked about was the carbon cycle. And you remember the two special terms we used there? I don't have it on this slide. I will after you say it. Alkalinity <laughs> and water hardness. Yeah. And which one of those is important for treating fish? Uh, Alkalinity. Good, Sam, good. <laughs> Sorry, and which one of those really right <laughs> is important in managing a hatchery? I'm done, I'm still sweating. So which one is important in managing young fish, growing them? Um, hard water. Water. Yeah, water. Yeah. Good. Just and how come? What is copper. it measuring? Copper. Copper's measuring bad. Copper is bad, and copper and alkalinity go together. And hardness is good, and hardness is what? Minerals. Minerals, right. Calcium, bone mm -hmm. development, things like that. Okay. So today, we're like I said, we're doing a full semester's worth of work in 40 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> so hang on. <laughs> so I think we've talked about all of this. Um, what do you guys, can you explain to me or to some, to your friends, they say, you said we talked about sick fish. What is a diseased animal? It's uh, not, like not abnormal. Not or abnormal? Like a condition that's like not abnormal. Not, not normal. Not normal. Not normal. You're right. I thought that was like not. Oh, I said not abnormal. Yeah, you said kind of a double negative. <laughs> Sorry. So it's it's a not not normal condition. Yesterday we talked about non-infectious diseases. We talked about nutritional problems, uh, vitamin C deficiency and broken back, tumors. This, this fish can't close its mouth because it has a mass in here. This one looks ratty because it got exposed to chlorine. So all of those are non-infectious. So that leads us to today. No problem. <laughs> We're going to talk about some of the infectious diseases. I'm going to keep it super light, but there's different types of infections. So what we really are going to focus on is these two parasites and bacteria because those are the most common ones that we see. 
And of these two fish, which one of those looks like it might have a bacterial problem? Uh, the top one. The top one, right. Because it's got what? Uh, blood, the uh, yes. bloody thing. Yes, yes, yes. Got a bloody ulcer. Yes. You know, what do you call that? And this is actually, it may not show up good in the slide, but it's actually a really deep sore and ulcer. Oh. So what we're going to do for our activity, I'm going to wait till we're about halfway through so you can move around a little bit. But we're going to mm -hmm. practice some bacteriology. I don't have anything really mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> I brought toys. So I'm going to let you use this fish, and we're going to do practice culture and practice sensitivity tests. So we're going to do that in a minute, just so you have mm -hmm. something to do. And what's abnormal about this fish down here? The gills. Yeah. The gills. And what's wrong with them? The parasite. You don't know that because you didn't look at it under microscope. Well, yet. it's you, no, you remember not, it from the other day. There's not enough blood. Yeah, discoloration. Correct. Like the fin thing kind of has like a little thing on it too. Yeah, it does look a little ratty. So then we look, we take a piece of that and look at it under the microscope. Oops, and we get parasites. Okay. So a lot of times people call and say, "Oh, my fish are sick," and um. I say, okay, well, like yesterday, I remember I left here and I went out to somebody's pond between here and Chapelin, and his fish have been, he's lost like 10 fish in six weeks, so it's not a crisis, right? But we couldn't, we looked all over, we couldn't find a sick one, so that was okay. But when people say, what like, was it? It was a cat, they were catfish, and they had, we found one really dead gross one, and it had big ulcers like this. Mm -hmm. So what do you think it might have been? Yeah, I think it was probably bacteria, and it, it seemed like it was he'd lost one fish in the last week, so, and it was rotten. And we're going to talk about rotten fish because they're not not useful from a lab in the lab. Okay, so before we start working on them, we got to catch them. But I thought you guys might not really have an idea of what we can do with fish, right? How many of you have gone with your mom to take your dog to the vet? What's one of the first things your your vet does? Cuts the hair. Cuts the hair. Okay, I was thinking simpler than that. Usually we start off with, um, oh, that's the review slide last. That's interesting. That's supposed to be the last slide. All right, I'm going to hope everything else is in order. <laughs> so we start off examining the animal. And to examine a fish, we're going to look at the animal. So one of the things we want to do is look in the mouth. What I One day somebody brought me a very skinny fish in a lab, and we I did an exam. And, what kind of, what do you think you might find in the mouth? A fish. Yeah. That's actually, that happens. We have a big predator and he eats a fish that's too big and he can't swallow it. Catfish and he'll die. Fish. Yeah, I've seen that several times. What else might you find in the mouth? Parasite. Teeth. Teeth? That's what, that's, what might you find in the mouth that's abnormal? Parasites. Yeah, there's parasites that live in the mouth. I was thinking of fishing lures. Sometimes people catch fish and bring them and put them in an aquarium and they just cut the leader off. And you open their mouth, and there's just a big lure in there, so they can't eat. Um, what do you think's wrong with this tank? It has a big old thing on the side of it. Yeah. You can't really tell from the picture. No, you can't really tell from the picture. If you had to guess from what we've seen. Bacteria. Yeah, it's got a bacterial infection. What's wrong with the sturgeon? The sturgeon doesn't show up too good, but he was really skinny, so I was saying assess body condition. If you could see him a little bit better. Sturgeon are expensive. Off. That fish better make it. Yeah, they're hard to keep too. They they don't have have really good eaters. Better make it. They are really expensive. I love sturgeon. <laughs> and they're very friendly, but they can be really hard to get to eat sometimes. And this is a fish you've seen before. What's wrong with that one? Oh, it had a cancer in the stomach. Right? It did, but you yeah. said you haven't cut it open yet. You don't know that. You just know it. what's abnormal. It's too fast back. Yeah, it's got a swollen. Swollen. It's got a big belly. Very good. So this is where I was trying to go with where do you do, happens when you take your dog to the vet. You usually stick it on a scale. Oh, <laughs> so we do that with fish too. So we know how, how do you keep the fish alive while it's out of the water. That's a great question. Well, one of the things we do. Where do they absorb oxygen from? Your gills. Yeah. Your gills. So as long as we keep those gills wet, and on this guy, he's just out of the water for a minute because we're sitting him on a scale and then putting him back in his bucket. That's what I thought. I thought so, I thought so. too. I thought went out of water. Yeah. Um, but uh, if we're doing surgery or wow. something, we put a tube in their mouth and it's got aerated water with drugs in it, and that um, keeps them alive. And we did a surgery on a large mouth bass last fall that took an hour and a half. The fish is doing great. Uh -huh. And this is just showing you 
once we get our hands on them, what we want to do is collect some of these things. So, like I, that fish with the uh, gills that were real pale, and I said, well, you can't tell what it is until you look under the microscope. That becomes really important with some of these diseases. So we take little pieces of tissue. You can see this is a big bass. Bass are easy to get to the operculum. So you lift up the operculum and you just cut a tiny bit of tissue. You're not hurting the fish. You're just taking a little tiny bit and putting it on a microscope slide and looking at it under the scope. And usually we do this tank side. And you can see just even on this little tiny fish, a little tiny bit of tissue, a little bit of scale, a little bit of fin, and then you just make a, a slide. Have you guys worked with microscopes at all? Mm -hmm. This is what I wanted to do today, Leslie. I wanted to bring in a scope and a fish, but apparently it's not legal to do that. Or I don't know, but do mean, I didn't have permission to do something with a what light animal. <laughs> okay. But if we do this again, because they can totally do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you get your pieces of um, gill, scale, skin, and then you look at them under the microscope. So what does that look like? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And how about this? Yes. yes, exactly. So you learn what normal is. You learn what the outside looks normal, and you learn what on the inside looks normal. And then you can figure out what's not supposed to be there. So everything we've talked about the last three days is preventing diseases. We're trying to keep everything nice and quiet and calm and prevent things from going wrong. And um, when things do go wrong, that's when we have to start. Um, doing some action. So what's, what looks abnormal about that clown roach? It's like white all over. Okay, very good. Everybody agree? Okay, so we decided to use our tools. We made little biopsies. And I wish I had video of this. So we look under the skin and we see this big brown thing. Is that, I know you haven't looked at this before, but that's abnormal. And see that red there? That's a little bit of gill tissue. And then you've got this huge, big brown thing. Could that be a mass or a rock? Really good guesses. And if we had a video of this, um, you would see it's actually tumbling like a tumbleweed. So it's a little single cell parasite. And this is one that, um, this is the only fish disease I learned when I was in vet school. <laughs> but we call this one ick. Everybody say ick. Yeah. Ick, right? Um, you don't need to know the Latin word. But it's a parasite that is all over the place. And it, I'm going to show you the life cycle in a minute, but it can replicate really, really fast. So it's one of the very few fish emergencies that we have. Can you say that full word? The full word? Yeah, actually, ichthyopterius. In ichthy, that's Latin for fish, right? So ichthyopterius. And this is actually important, if you can remember this. Multiphilus. It means many sons in Latin. And that's because, I'll show you, I'll show you exactly why it's called that. Yes. I'll come back to that one in a minute. This is the life cycle, and this is not something that you need to learn all the time, but here's our fish with white spots, right? And you get one single parasite comes off this fish, and it forms a fifth, in the, and it can be in the bottom of the tank, it can be on a leaf on the fish. So even though we call this white spot disease, um, it's not always it. So that's why we use the microscope to go in and, and pull a sample and look at it and make sure. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So there's our life cycle. So re the reason this parasite is important is because many suns. Many suns. It reproduces like crazy. Yeah, that's how I'm going to remember that. Many suns. Many suns. Many that's many fine. That's, it actually. Even though we don't learn Latin in school, it can be very helpful. Okay, so y'all don't have to like during vet or during this whole course don't have to learn it. Learn the Latin. You don't like, have to learn Latin, no. But you should know this is one parasite you should know. I think he's asking that of you. Oh, yeah, for me? You have to learn, did you have to learn? Yeah, we have yeah. to learn Latin. A little bit. We have to know if we see the like if I see somebody. Yeah. Oh, sorry. If I see that word, I have to know what that is. If I only see the scientific word. I had nightmares. I took many years ago. You guys were, you were probably born, but you were really little. I had to take an exam that I was very worried about. And I had nightmares that all, it, it was my zoo vet exam. And I'm a fish person. I'm not a mammal person. And I was freaking out that all the mammals words were, were going to be in Latin for their genus and species. And I wasn't going to know what the heck they were talking about. <laughs> 
But fortunately, they didn't do that. They would talk about, you know, a monkey or whatever. I had to know a little bit, but I didn't have to know it all. But that can be very intimidating. But in this case, if you can remember what many suns, then you'll remember why this guy's important. So the white spots, but knowing that just because you see white spots, you still need to do the microscope trick. So if we do a wet lab, we could do this. I would love that. So that's what this means. You must biopsy to confirm. That's what we call when we just take a, a cover slip, scrape it, put it on under the microscope, and you'll see this thing, and it wiggles all over the place. I probably have a video of it on my um, computer um, if we have time at the end. But anyway, I also wanted to introduce you to, so we're really focusing on bacteria and parasites. So this is the parasite part. There's three back parasite treatments that you should have heard of. The one we talked about yesterday is copper, copper sulfate, and I'll come back to that in a minute. But the other two you should have heard of is formalin, and there's several different kinds of these. This is the one we use most commonly in aquariums or in um, like a SeaWorld Bass Pro Shop, you know, a display tank because it's clear, it's, so it doesn't just color the water, it's legal, um, it's got its own issues. But copper and potassium, they're, they're not illegal, so you're not doing anything wrong to use them, they're just not approved. Um, and so there's kind of a gray zone that you don't need to worry about. I need to worry about. But this is what potassium looks like. It turns the water purple, which looks really nice. And everybody likes that. But as it works, it turns the water brown and then it looks ugly. I was, I was going to ask if the purple was it because I actually remember using that. See? Yeah. Where did you use it? Uh, I grew up on a fish farm in Missouri. Oh, cool. What kind of fish did you grow? Uh, everything. <laughs> I mean, catfish, tilapia, goldfish, koi. Oh, that's awesome. So carp, this is everything. for you. <laughs> Somewhere. So you ever, did you ever get it on your clothes? I don't remember. I was young. Yeah, it's it wrecks your clothes. Hmm. It's the only time I'll wear like a white coat or something because it just it turns everything brown. But very good, yeah. So we use this a lot on uh, copper and potassium are good in ponds because they're cheap enough that you can afford to put them in a pond. This stuff is really expensive. So to put it in a production pond is really cost prohibitive. Plus, it really crashes the algae and, and you get oxygen problems. But copper, you should know, because this is used a lot in production ponds, and you may have used it on your farm in Missouri. Um, legally, it's an algicide. So when the legal use of it is you're putting it in to kill the algae. If you happen to kill the ick at the same time, that was wonderful. So that's how we kind of get around that. But the thing to know, there's two things to know about this that's important. One is because it kills algae, what happens if the out? We talked about phytoplankton out and oxygen. Oh, yeah. So if you crash your algae, yeah. then the tank or pond can crash, and you can lose fish from low DO. And then the other thing we talked about yesterday. This is the one where you have to know alkalinity. So I'll tell you another example. I had a case um, actually not far from here. I don't remember exactly where. Do you know if there's any prisons around here that have fish ponds? Or that was a big thing a while back. Well, somewhere on oh, this coast, Maui. Damn south, I do. There was dogs down here. They, there are a lot of dogs. Okay. Well, this this okay. was a small prison of some sort. Um, but they had a fish pond out there, maybe an acre, and they were raising catfish. And the, the inmates were taking care of the fish, and then they were taking them into uh, the kitchen, and they were, you know, that was part of their their food. And they got our favorite parasite that we just talked about. White spot ick. And uh, it was a deep pond and it had a really heavy phytoplankton bloom. So we had to use copper to kill the ick, but if we go in and kill the phytoplankton, what's going to happen? The yeah, the oxygen's going to crash. So it was a real difficult case, but what we ended up doing was treating a quarter of the pond every day or mix it up so that we just treated a little bit at a time and kept moving it around. And we finally got it under. What if you? Over increased your DO, and then when you put the uh, your copper powder, I mean, in, you could have had like a powder wheel and then something dropped right. in the water. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. Yeah, you sure could. But with it being catfish too, it was a lot easier than another type of fish because they require less oxygen, right? Right. You guys are very good. I don't know if you realize how good you are. I was so impressed with y'all yesterday, telling your principal about the water, and you were spot on every single one of you. 
So that's exactly right. So you have that balance. If you know your oxygen is at risk, you either find another trick or use your, your paddle wheels. Very good. Okay, so now we're getting close to our, our activity. We're going to talk, okay, any questions about parasites? That's like a 10 minute introduction to parasites. Is there any uh, good parasites? That's a really good question. There probably are. We probably, have you guys ever looked at like lumen contents under a microscope? You see all the stuff moving around in there? Probably with some of our herbivorous fish. What does herbivorous mean? Herb, herb, herb. Okay, that's what I thought. Plant, like plant, plant planting. Fish. Some of our plant eating fish have these really long and complex GI tracts, just like uh, anim other animals that eat plant material. They need to digest all that stuff. And they have critters in their gut that are probably analogous to some of the critters that live in a rumen and just help with the digestive process, but we don't always understand that very well. So, probably yes. Almost certainly yes, but probably not well understood. Okay, so now we're going to talk about bacterial diseases. We're going to do our little activity. What's wrong? Does anybody know what kind of fish that is? He's pretty fat. Yeah. He's pretty, it's not, a, I think it's a discus, but it's pretty darn hard to say. So I would say brim is a good guess. <laughs> but regardless, what's this is a sad? <laughs> it's a sad fish. He's a very sad fish. He's, he's a pathetic fish. <laughs> so what do you guys see wrong with this guy? What what if you were he describing? Has like a, he has like a thing on his back. Okay, what kind of a thing? Like, You're talking to me on the phone. I'm like, what kind of a thing are you talking about? Uh it looks like he has a bacteria. Yeah, the bacteria. An ulcer. No. Oh. He's got an ulcer on his on his side. What about his color? Uh it's oh. good on the face, like on the face, but it's kind of fading on the body. Yeah. Okay. If if this is a discus is, I believe, it's supposed to be actually bright turquoise blue. Mm -hmm. I like the head. Yeah, so if you knew that it was supposed to be bright turquoise, what would you say about its color? It's dull. It's dull, it's dark. His hands, like you said, they're very blanched yeah. back here. And uh, he just looks pretty rough. And he was also, this was his posture in the water column. So is that a normal posture? Yeah. No, so he's really pretty bad shape. So that's kind of the science that we look for with bacterial disease. Not feeding any fish that doesn't feel good, doesn't, regardless of the reason, it's going to not feed. So that's not real helpful, except telling you that something's wrong. And the same with most of these changes in behavior. They just mean the fish doesn't feel good. But the hemorrhages and the ulcer can be really helpful in determining that it might be bacteria. It's not definitive. We still have to culture, which we're going to talk about. Um, do we know what this means, culture? We're not talking about culturing fish now. We're talking about culturing Bacteria. Bacteria. Have you guys had any exposure to that? A little bit of microbiology? Okay, so what we're going to do on a small fish, we're going to do this. When we do, when we say sterile technique, what that means is everything is covered with bacteria, right? And if I were to go and take a sample out of your tank or rub a loop on your you're um, fish, you're going to get bacteria. Water. So if we want to know what's going on internally in the fish, we have to be able to get internally in a clean way. So usually we use, after we euthanize the fish, we use alcohol and, and flame. So you guys will probably enjoy that. You can dip the fish in alcohol and set him on fire, or you can swab him with alcohol and set him on fire. But that's usually what happens. Does it hurt the fish? Well, he's dead. Because oh. we wiped him out. Never mind. Yeah, you don't do it on a live one. Okay, that would be easier. Now, if you wanted to do, suppose this, what they're doing here, what, what do you think that might be? That fish looks like he's cut in half, right? What what organ runs along the backbone? Do you remember? The kidney. So this is a small fish, and after he's dead, and you alcohol him and flame him, and you cut him in half, and then you go in with your loop, and you get into his kidney, and then you put it on a plate. But Suppose this was a $500 discus and you wanted to try to save it. You don't want to cut him in half and flame him. You could just go to the ulcer. So I'm going to pass this around. You guys can this is what we call a loop. And if you've never done bacteriology, we're going to do some in a minute. But this is a, a, a tool that we use. So you can see, we just have a little alcohol burner on the desk. So I can stick this in there and it turns red hot. Don't touch it when it does that. And then you can go right into the tissue, and then you have your, your plate. 
you can swap it. You guys can look at that and you get some more toys for you. So we try to get some on pan. We could. Aww. I'll take it. <laughs> it's already on fire because you ate that whole pack. <laughs> so you guys know what I'm this is? I'm fire right now. Have you seen this kind of thing? That's like a, I know what it is, but we've never used them. Okay. Uh, I would have brought one, but I didn't have one. But it's an auger plate, and each one of those spots, oh shoot, I thought I had some uh, animations in here. Evidently, I was doing this really late yesterday, so I did not do my best work. But each one of these spots is an individual colony. You want to come up and look at this, just to see what the colonies look like, since I don't have it highlighted? Oh, stretch. So tell them what the colony I would antibiotic to do, but this is called what? Do you remember? Oh, sensitivity. sensitivity test. So that's the test. We don't do a sensitivity test on the parasites. Why do you think? Any idea? Because they're alive. Well, bacteria are alive. But... Well, the, the reason is because the bacteria change really quickly and can develop this resistance. You probably heard in the news people talk about resistance. If you have MRSA, then you know that that's one of the problems with that is you, it's resistant to antibiotics and can be difficult to treat. And parasites, the chemicals that we talked about, the formalin, the copper, and the potassium, they just destroy the organism. They just wipe it out. But they don't absorb into the tissues, so they wouldn't get your bacteria. The bacteria are in your organs and your blood. And so you need something that'll go in and get into the tissues of your body or the fish's body to get the bacteria. Does that make sense? So different treatments for different Right. Okay. So the last thing we're going to talk about, and I think I have, I think this is the only slide on this, is viral diseases. And I, you don't need to know anything about viral diseases really except that we don't treat them with drugs in fish. In people... You cut them out, basically. You can cut them out if you can. Usually we just let the fish heal itself. So, but let's slow down for a minute. What, what is abnormal about that fish? It has like a sister like on top of it. Yeah, it's got one there, there. You know what? What about those two yellow spots? Any idea what those are? Um, cysts. Good guess. Anybody else? Anybody been around cichlids? I mean, so this would be a really good example where you might want to see another fish of the same species. Those are actually normal colorations. I'm pretty sure on that fish. They have, on this species, they're mouth rotors. So they have these eye spots by their tail so that predators go towards their tail. Yeah, and um, right. so if you had two fish side by side and they had the same spots, then you'd realize that was normal and it wasn't part of the disease process. But these cauliflower-like lemons, those are abnormal and that's a disease we call them persistent. What's abnormal about the koi, aside from the fact that I already cut off his little one? He's um. dead. Nothing. Do those gills look normal, healthy to you? He has oh. herpes. He does have herpes. What do you see that's abnormal? The white oh, there you go. Yeah, this is very abnormal. So koi herpes virus is a very contagious disease, and it um, attacks the gills. So you see these really white, nasty gills. But you still need to do lab tests to confirm. How does the koi get herpes? That's a great idea. It's um, from another koi that has herpes. It's a different herpes than you get, or that people get, or a, a whole bunch of different herpes. But herpes usually are species specific, which means that koi herpes pretty much stays with koi, people herpes stays with people. But they get it from other infected koi, and it spreads through the water. It must spread because the way fish, you know, you produce if one koi has herpes. You know, yeah, well, this is a gill herpes, so it's yeah. uh, a little bit different than what you might be thinking about. Okay. Okay. It really, it's really focused on the gills, but yeah, it, it does. It's not fun. It's not a fun disease. And th this is really what I wanted you to know about viruses. It circle this. Viruses are not treated with medication in fish. So <coughs> typically, if you, if, you, if you say, my fish has a virus, I'm going to give it antibiotics, no. The antibiotics won't work. So you don't treat them with medication. That's where you really get a specialist. This is Dr. Carla Phillips, one of my former students. She's one of my all time favorite students. And uh, I just like that picture. But you really need a specialist to help you get through that.
So there, we do have tricks up our sleeve, but they're not usually medication. It's usually making the fish feel better, adjusting the temperature. Okay, the very last thing we're going to talk about is if you have a problem and it's beyond what you're able to do on your farm, you need to seek help from a specialist. So you're going to call me or call somebody else, and that's cool. And <laughs> what, what do you think would be the very best sample to, to give somebody that's at a lab? A live sick fish. Right. That's like Mecca for us because we want one that looks like it's going to die two seconds after we kill it. So we're <laughs> going to use an idea. Now, with pet fish, we, we don't always have to wipe them out. But in aquaculture fish, we're dealing with population. So if we kill five or six fish in order to save 100,000, you think that's a good deal for the farmer? Yeah. yeah, that's a really good deal for the farmer. So that's usually our uh, stand. So we're going to take, and I don't know if you can see it, but there's a couple little tiny fish in there. And if we if some the farmer can ship them overnight to the lab or bring them in, I have people bring fish in buckets every now and then, then that's fantastic. Um, do you think I want to use this as my water sample for the system? No, because it's all contaminated. Good, right. So you want to have a separate water sample. Excellent. Okay, if you can't There's send a live there. fish and you want to send a dead one, that's okay. You don't have quite as much value there, but Come up here again and look at this fish. But you have to have ice. You have to have ice. And keep them fresh. And you have to, in a perfect world, warm ration oh, plastic anyone. and then put on the ice. Clear eyes. Clear eyes. I'm going to show you some rotten fish in a minute. So clear <laughs> eyes, red gills, and they don't smell. Because if they smell like a dead fish, they're a dead fish. They do. color. So this is a really good example of the kind of fish you want to send in. But I love the clear eyes that do show up. Okay, so we're going to catch, have a fish that's in your just side. Um, this happens all the time. Some of the guy yesterday, oh, I just found one, it floated up. Can I send it to you? No, I don't want to send you dead rotten fish. It's not any good. So, and what do you think about this one? Does that look like a good fish? How do you yeah. think the lab smelled that day? <laughs> Horrible. Yeah, we got in trouble. <laughs> so, this is how it came. Somebody put it in a towel and put it in a tub. And uh, put ice on it, and when we <laughs> unwrapped it, yeah, it was pretty gross. So that one's no good. You can't learn anything from that one. So, and then we get uh, shipping containers that look well, regular fish boxes. Have you seen those? Yeah, we brought that. our fish from there. Yeah, those are perfect. If you've got access to that, you can ship those. Obviously, you have to put it in a, um, a container. If somebody's in another area and they don't have access to this, they can get a little your cooler of some sort and send it and that works just fine. What doesn't work, shoe boxes, mail express mail envelopes. Um the UPS people and the mail people get really upset if you have stinky rotten fish water leaking all over their truck or their office. They get very hostile. So but you have to tell people because they don't think about it. And I think I mentioned one day the worst sample I ever got was two eyeballs in a mayonnaise jar. Oh, no. So disgusting. So disgusting. Okay, that's all I got. Um, <laughs> do do let me go my review slide because I screwed that up. Someone sent you two eyeballs and a man. Well, it wasn't jar. eyeballs when you put it in the jar. It decomposed. It put two, a fish in a mayonnaise jar with water. There it is. You put a fish in a mayonnaise jar with water and then stuck it in regular slow mail. And it died, or was either it was definitely put it in, or it died en route. And he calls me up like a week later, and he says, "Did you get my fish?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And then, like the next day, this box arrives. It has this mayonnaise jar that looks it's just cloudy white, and then you can see two eyeballs <laughs> floating around. It was disgusting. I just I didn't even obviously open it. It went to the dumpster. So anyway, this is the, the review slide that somehow ended up earlier in the presentation than intended. We talked about this. The quarantine, you got that this morning, right? Mm -hmm. Biosecurity plan, mm -hmm. non-infectious disease, water quality, you guys are solid on that. Um, and then we mainly talked about parasites and bacteria today. Mm -hmm. So I think you really have got a really good knowledge base. You guys have really impressed me.